Today's episode of Real Talk Christian Podcast is sponsored by the Christian Standard Bible. The goal of the CSB is to be faithful to the original languages without sacrificing clarity, all while maintaining both accuracy and readability. With the beautiful designs and multiple study Bible options, everyone from adults to teens and even children can find a CSB Bible that they enjoy. Learn more at csbible.com. Again, that's csbible.com. Welcome to Real Talk Christian Podcast, where we drink coffee and have real conversations on faith, culture, and society. I'm your host, Chris Fuller. And I'm Mark Hyde. And on today's episode, it's part two of Impending Evil. How do we handle the last days? A look at 2 Timothy. Sorry, that was really bad. (laughs) We'll we'll keep it. 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. There you go, bro. All right, Mark, you ready to dive into this? (laughs) I guess so. Let's Let's go. go. Phenomenal. Wow. That was a fail in so many uh, regards. Dip, 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 dip. Yeah, that one. <laughs> that was beautiful, my friend. Yeah, well, you, you are, just got to roll with the punches sometimes. You are as smooth as chunky peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> Only when I say 2 Timothy 3, okay, I get a hell so, of Okay, so uh, my sister could not say Thessalonians very well. The Thethan, Thapalupian. And so I would make fun of her. And then, let's be honest, the real joke is on me. Sixth. Because I can't say the word sixth. Sixth. I think I said it correctly that time. No, you didn't. You said sixth. Really? Sixth. Well, if you knew the Anyways. show, I cannot say that word. It's been since day one, since some boy over here has razzed me about it. It's been pretty fun. I have actually, the, I think the first thing I razzed you on was your laugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my <laughs> That one, yeah. <laughs> yeah that yeah, one that right one. there. Have, do I still do that laugh, guys? No, I think you've gotten rid of that I laugh. Go, <laughs> ever <since>. Yeah, you're like, ha, <laughs> ha. It's different now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's a little different now, but welcome back, my friend. What's up, buddy? We got a, another episode here for uh, our listeners. This is part two. We got to fly through this intro because we got a lot of content to cover. But we still want to have fun because, you know, at the end of the day, I really enjoyed getting to know more about you. It's my turn to put my hand on oh, your leg because you would like put your it. hand on my leg all episode. <laughs> and it's, it's not weird. It's, it's really not. It's very natural. Which is kind of scary at the same time. It is kind of scary. We're really that close, I guess. We're brothers. Did you like my little my little gif that I sent to you today during our little texting thing <laughs> thread going on? I was all like, bros. <laughs> We're bros. It's so true. I, got, I got in trouble in the group thread, though. I got Did you? Big, remember, remember, Janine was like, I'm not, I'm not going to roll. Oh, no. She oh, said, I'm going to hide the coffee, coffee from you. Yeah, because like, you called her old, but over the glasses. <laughs> and she was fine. I'm just going to hold the co- I'm going to hide the coffee when you come over. And I just said the gif of uh, from Home Alone where it says, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I know she started laughing. <laughs> it was glorious. Anyways. But welcome back, my friend. So we have a question from our Facebook group, the Real Talk Christian Podcast Community. We do. And here's the fun. I actually memorized the the one of the questions because. You it, did? Yeah, I did because I looked at it real fast. I'm like, ha, that So you didn't good. memorize it. You you crammed for it. I were, did. were you an expert crammer? Yes. Not a Kramer. Not but Kramer, a Kramer, but a Kramer. <laughs> I, I, I picked up on that one, too. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I, I got a question for you, Mark, from our okay. listener, and I don't remember which listener it was from, but is water wet? I thought you wet? remembered it. Actually, um, I've had many fights with my teenagers over this. Ooh. Water is not wet. How is it not? Because water is properties, and when you feel the water, you become wet. But isn't... Is, is a fish wet when it's inside water, or is it just there? Well, see, but you have to take it to the molecular level. So if your shirt is impregnated with H2O molecules, is right. it wet? You feel that it's wet, yes. No. It, is just, it substance? Is it being wet? Or is it it's, just... It's a molecular structure of tiny little molecules that are in case on anybody's it. wondering, so I actually do believe water is wet. It's more than <laughs> yeah. really fun to say, no, it's it, not. It's but, fun it, to have these conversations. Like, like the conversation of is, is, uh, is a hot dog a sandwich? No, and yes. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I am bound it's to, all, determine, to determine that yes, it's, yes, it is. It's all based upon opinion. It is all based upon opinion. So what's your opinion? Of a hot dog? Of a hot dog. I would say a hot dog is not a sandwich because a sandwich has stuff in the middle, but yeah. it closes on both sides. Subway doesn't. 
Yes, it does. It Subway has, is the it has exact stuff same in the thing as a bun. No, it has stuff in the middle. It comes like this. Because they, I, mine is always cut. Yeah, but Subway, they always fold it back up. So it's like a... Like if you get a meatball marinara, there is no difference between okay, meatball marinara all, and a sideways hot dog. Okay, first of all, who goes to Subway and gets a meatball? If Not I want me. Italian food, I'll go get Italian food. I'm not going to get meatballs on my sandwich. Okay, so here's a fun question. What's your go-to Subway order? I, Drop it right okay, now. So What's here your go-to it is. It's Subway it's a, order? It's a foot long on whole wheat bread. It's okay. an oven roasted with pepper jack cheese, extra onion, extra black olive, uh, you, said, with, uh, you said oven roasted, so it's oven uh, roasted chicken breast? Oven roasted chicken okay. breast. Okay. Toasted or not toasted? Toasted. Okay. With the pepper jack cheese. Okay. Extra onion, extra black olive, jalapeno, banana pepper, mm. ranch, sriracha sauce, oil vinegar, salt and pepper. Boom. That's That was solid. Mine, you ready for this? Let's go. Foot long Italian herbs and cheese, oven roasted chicken breast, not toasted. Not what, toasted. What's the per- purpose of getting but they, they they heat the chicken and then the bread tastes like normal normal bread. It's not toast. I don't like toasted bread. I really don't like toasted bread. I like soft bread. But you get that and then you do either pepper jack or provolone based on the day. Usually it's provolone and then you do everything. You were the kid that couldn't eat a popsicle Every- on a stick, could you? You had to have it out of the, a little plastic bag. No, I did, but then I, I would, I would, ga- I would gag so when I, I would gag when I hit the sp- when I hit the, <laughs> yeah, see? when I hit the thing. I don't, I, I, I preferred push pops as a kid. So oh, yes, dude, I love push. I pops. preferred push pops yes. over popsicles. The Flintstone, any day. the Flintstone push pops, though. Yes, uh, those hundred percent or we, the creamsicle ones. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but so, but you get everything on it besides black olives and tomatoes. All right. And I mean, I'm, and, 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 I mean, I had jalap- and, and jalapenos. I'm not the biggest fan of them. I had jalapenos on it last time. It was, it was all right. But the kicker of it all is you have to make sure you get extra pickles. Mm, yeah, I like pickles. And then extra, extra uh, sweet onion sauce. Ooh. And the reason how I figured this out was my, my best friend growing up, Adam Pendle, who's also my realtor. So if you're in South Bend, in the Michigan area, you need a realtor. Hit me up, and I will hook you up with Adam Pendle. And Adam, but that's a 5% interest we get uh, off of whatever sales you Homeboy doesn't even get 5%. He gets like 30 Shh. right? It doesn't but matter. But anyway, he was like, because my favorite growing up as a kid was the sweet onion chicken sure, teriyaki. Sure. He's like, and, and so basketball, he'd be like, dude, just get the oven roast and chicken breast and do extra sweet onion sauce. And it only costs 5 Remember those $5 foot long? 5 $5. $5, five dollar, five five dollar foot, foot long. long. <laughs> hey. I tried really hard on that one. Um, rather than paying like the seven bucks. So ever since he was like, dude, he's even like, all right, my dude. You know, most of my memories with Adam Pendle go back to food. You're a foodie. We, uh, uh, well, like cheap. We're talking like we had a limit on how many chicken patties we were, we were allowed to eat at each other's houses because we ate too many. Wow. I we wish had I had a that limit. metabolism. So Adam taught me how to eat mac and cheese. With, with hot dogs? No. Uh, yes. yes. And applesauce. Ooh, nice. It's really good. And then straight how, out the jar. So we would make chicken patties, and what we would do is we put barbecue sauce on it, mm-hmm. pickles, mm-hmm. deli ham, cheese, melt the cheese on a bun. Mm, I'd have to taste dip it. Dip it in barbecue I'm sauce. I'm not opposed that to mug tasting is it. It's so good. It's not as good as best meatloaf, but it is so good. All right, you gotta quit mentioning the meatloaf. It's too many episodes I in a see row. How many in a row? I can you second talk about no, the meatloaf. No, no more meatloaf I for you. The meatloaf. I did tell Beth, Raina that if she Beth, finds herself in South Bend, we will eat some meatloaf with Beth. Beth. Next time he mentions the meatloaf, you've you've got to punish him some way. I don't can care we how. play the shot game? Just in, not with no. not with alcohol, but no. every time Marcus Coffee? brings up meatloaf, someone's take a shot of espresso. Okay, I'm down. That sounds really fun. But, right, anyways, uh, so it's a coffee we're drinking tonight. Speaking of coffee and a shot of espresso, oh, we're only doing one question. We're only doing. Do we get? We're almost at ten minutes already. But my favorite. Oh, we that was so Adam. Much. Adam asked water, but but someone asked, are there any life hacks? That you, you have? yeah, but you already went on with like eight other questions. So because you rabbit trail, now we got to move on. Don't be making fun of me. The coffee. The coffee we're drinking tonight is again the RTC Mexican high grown so roast. So amazing. Still good. Thank you. Anyways, for, this for me. Um. So our review for the night. Is from Jose G from PDX. It says, stumbled upon this podcast and, and then it says dot, dot, dot. And that was it. That was all it said in the title. <laughs> I'm so like, we, what's the rest of it? Homeboy made too long of a title is what I'm hearing. What's the rest of it? What's so anyways. The, what, go, what's the rest so of it? So this comes from Jose G from PDX. And it says, great topics, very knowledgeable, especially for someone like me who's searching for God and looking for a church. My man's. Mark and Fuller are people who I'd love to have as friends. Well, bro, you are our friends. Much love from Jose from Portland, Oregon. Keep it weird, homie. Keep, Keep it, it weird, man. Keep it Keep weird. Keep Portland weird. <laughs> 
You well, never heard that phrase before? Keep Portland weird? That's like the mantra, man. The mantra of Portland is keep Portland weird. And they also have some really good coffee places that I've heard. Okay. Anyways. But I anyway, know Jose. Thank you so much, Jose. Review. Appreciate we it. We want to get you a mini swag bag, homie. So hit us up with your address, either Facebook, Instagram, email, and we Text. will make sure Janelle gets it out. Yes. She has been She's phenomenal been on in that. It. And you upgraded the mini swag bag. We, you get a magnet and an actual bag now. Like an actual drawstring bag? Yeah, an actual drawstring bag. So when you go to the gym, like what I'm about to throw do your, in my bag. You can throw your dirty clothes in the bag after you're done. Actually, I may need to steal another one from you because I bet you my kids are going to steal this one. That's your problem, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so reach out to feelings. us if you would like a mini swag bag and have not gotten one already. I love it. All right, so let's dive back into this conversation of impending evil. How do we handle the quote-unquote last days? A look at 2 Timothy This is like the chapter fastest we've ever actually three. started an episode. Well, it's actually uh, the second half of an episode, so that's probably why. That's true. So, so, if, so if you found us with this episode first, go, go back. back an episode, so that way you know what we talk about. Back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Oh, now stop. Now listen to podcasts. Listen to podcasts. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, very really weird. Thankfully, that was so bad, they it, can't get us on a copyright claim. Oh, yeah, it was pretty bad. <laughs> I Anyways, love you, buddy. I love so you. Nice hospital socks, if, by the way. Uh, they're great. They're so comfortable. I, I had looked down like, you're wearing hospital socks. Uh, I am. Anywho, com- it was from my stint with COVID. They're free socks. That's true. I'm not going to leave free socks behind. They're, they're I, like... I paid for them anyways. They're Sky Zone socks with grippies on top. They're nice. Anyways, so uh, yeah, we're going to jump back into this conversation. Uh, last week, we kind of hit on a few. We hit uh, lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, demeaning, disobedient to parents, ungrateful. All out of 2 Timothy 3, 3 1, 1 through, through 5, 5, talking about of just what it, we're going to see in the last days and to avoid these people. And yeah, so we're going to continue back on this conversation of are these things happening today and and uh, how should we respond to them? All right, so let's shut this back into so high gear, buddy. The next one is unholy. Oh, and this is one where uh, we always hear the be ye holy. Is I am holy. Well, I'm going to tell you kind of where that came from. Tell them where it comes from. First Peter 1, 15 through 16 says, But as the one who called you is holy, you are also to be holy in your conduct. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. And that comes from Leviticus 11, 44 through 45, Leviticus 19, 2, and Leviticus 27. So three times in the Old Testament, in the book of Leviticus, it talks about being holy because God is holy. Mm -hmm. And then Peter, go ahead and reiterate it in 1 Peter. Do we have a lot of unholiness in this day and age? I feel like we do because people don't... We also need to define it. Well, that's what I was going to say, because people don't understand what being holy is. Being holy is not being perfect. No, you know, and, and nobody is. Per- and that's what I think it's where the struggle is, is, uh, you know, growing up in the background I come out of, we are always, told, oh, you got to be holy, which means don't wear holy jeans, which is a funny one. But it, it, they always they everyone in, in my background chalked up holiness to what you looked like, what you wore, what you how wore, you how your hair was cut, what you watch. Um, yeah. What you say, what you do, which, again, some of those things are not bad and they actually are good because we've talked about you and Janila especially talked about. The fact of, you know, just because we're just because we're Christians doesn't mean we don't need to guard our eyes and guard our hearts and guard our ears right. because yep. out of it flows the issues of life. But at the same time, a lot of people think of holy isn't just who you are. It's what you do. Right. You know? Right. And being Which, holy just means being separated. Right. It's, it's set, set apart. apart. Right. Set apart. But there is an aspect of that, right? Because mm-hmm. even if we look at the Old Testament in Israel, as they were set apart, they looked different from the world a peculiar people so that is what we need to be the peculiar people those ambassadors for christ those people who they see you and they go mark is from south bend because of the sweatshirt he's wearing and the flag that i fly in my front yard that too but that he, he set apart he's a south south bendian south south bendy south uh, whatever i, I don't, don't think there's know. a name there's not a, really a name for it i always said i'm a south sider but now i'm a northwesterner you're a, well, you're not even, a, no, I'm a Western. You're just a Western. I'm Western. I, I, you're I live Western. by Western. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Um, so, uh, as people, as Christians, I think the best way we need to be holy is we need to be those set apart people. And that doesn't mean perfection because well, let's face it, we all sin, but when we do sin, we are called to repent of that sin and 
in that repentance, we are again made holy, <laughs> set apart once again. And so. I think this is where it gets hard because, you know, we talked about this in other previous episodes where, you know, uh, it's not the fact of Jesus's prayer for his disciples when he said, it's not that I'm asking you to take them out of the world, but that way I'm sending you back into the world. So right. his prayer was protect my followers, right. God, while they're in the world. Right. And, you know, for us, we, we always share this, you know, you're supposed to be in the world, but not of the world. And a lot of Christians then put a bubble around themselves yes. rather than we're called to be ambassadors and missionaries, the sent ones to go into the world. Now, we are called out. We right. are called. I mean, the church is the called out ones, right. the gathering, but, the bride of But Christ. again, that means set apart. That means that we look different, not that we are in a Amish community different. 100%. Yeah, and, that's what, and I agree with you. But, you know, there's so many times where I'll hear, you know, Christians talk and they, they hold people to a certain standard. But then you look at how they live and it's like. I, I can't even tell a difference based on right. the way you talk or the, right. what you do or the parties or the, you know, what jokes, I don't say what jokes you think are funny, but more the fact of just no, like, but it's true, but there is it some is truth true. to that. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's truth in all that. So it, yeah, exactly. Of, Hey, on church, you, 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 you meet the criteria, but then Monday through Saturday, you're just living like the world. And I think it's a really, and I don't want to just, you know, bash people over the head because you and I have talked about how easy it is for even yes. us to fall into sure. that reality. I remember you shared that one time where it was, you, you were struggling with when, when you entered into the steel mill, you started talking and yeah. acting like you were in the steel mill. Right. I started getting, falling back into the, the swearing aspect and I had to repent of that and, uh, and I had to like, and it wasn't like constant. It would just be slip ups, you know, it would be like, Oh, I'm going out and intentionally swearing up and down. Like, but it, it's easy to fall into that. And it's like, no, my conversation needs to be good among the Gentiles. And when they good among the Gentiles, good along among the lost, those who aren't saved, because I am supposed to be holy. I'm supposed to be set apart. Not that I'm supposed to be better, right? Holiness is not betterness. Mm hmm. Because the only reason why I am where I am is because of Christ, not because of Chris. And that's grace. Do you like that? Not I like of Christ, that, not, not Christ. Chris. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> and that's, God, that's God's grace <laughs> right. in that, you know? Right. And so that's what we mean by be holy. So, all right, the next I one, like unloving. Mm. Man, this world is so full of unloving people, but also full of fake loving people. Oh, okay. Lean into that. Lean in, Cause I was, so, I was not prepared for you I, to say that. I know you weren't. And it just came to me, but it's so true that, how many times have we, we get those people that go, man, Mark, I really love you. And then behind your back, they're talking bad about you, right? They're kind of dump talking out of both sides of their mouth. And, and I know for you, you've experienced this. For me, I've experienced this. And I'm sure for a lot of our listeners, our, our RTC fam, they've, heard the, or they've had this experience probably in their life where they knew somebody that, that man, they were all buddy-buddy to your face. And then you find out they're talking bad about you behind your back. That is fake love, right? Mm -hmm. That's not real love. Because real gossip love, and slander and right, exactly. So yeah, there's a lot of things that 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 is, and um, so I, it's being unloving, and and we as Christians are called to be loving, right? Philippians two one through four says, if then there is any encouragement in Christ, if any consolation of love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any affection and mercy, make my joy complete by thinking the same way. Having the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility consider others as more important than yourself. Everyone should not look to his own interests, but rather to the interests of others. Because that is what love is, right? If I say I'm loving somebody, I'm looking to their interest, their well-being. It's Here's not. something that I'm wondering, right? So I'm, I'm looking at the passage of what Paul wrote to Timothy, and it talks about, you know, um, but you know, there's hard times will come the last days for people will be lovers of self, but then it flips into unloving. So I'm like, is there a difference between lovers of selves and unloving? Yes, because I think when, when Paul is talking to Timothy about that, the unlovingness is because they are so focused on self love. They're focused on themselves and, and are, there's a selfishness spirit there that they aren't. I think when he says, if you look at Paul and all the, all the scriptures that he wrote down about what love is, you know, love is patient, love is kind, love is, you know, all these things. And, and they're not, that's the unloving part. They're not these things. They're so worried about backbiting. They're so mm. worried about doing for themselves. How can they step on your throat to get ahead? I mean, that's not just in the Christian realm. It's in the, it's in the business world. You know, how many times have, have you heard of or seen People yourself climbing up the ladder? Yeah, or... to climb up the ladder, I'm going to step on the backs of others, you know, and that, that's a common saying, especially here in the States. I know we have listeners outside of the States, but in the States, 
that's a common thing that happens here that I'll climb on the back of anybody to get where I need to go. And I have goals in mind. And, you know, behind Mars Hill is a, pot, a hill of people that have uh, come off the bus. And by the end of it, I hope there's a mountain of people. You know, that's I'll drive over anybody hey, to get where loving. I'm going. Like that is the most unloving thing you could ever say about something. So I think that's what Paul is talking to, right? He laid out in the scriptures what love is. And unloving is the opposite of that. Because 1 Corinthians 13, you know, love is patient, love is kind, it doesn't envy or boast, it keeps no records long, of wrong, long, long suffering. suffering. Right. And a lot of times we talk about that passage in the in the realm of marriage, in the realm right. of weddings, which is true. Sure. But what most people don't realize is 1 Corinthians, which hopefully podcasters know this by now, because we've talked about this, 1 Corinthians 12 is talking all about the church and we have different gifts, so right. therefore use those gifts, but if you don't have love in using those gifts... Right. What's the point? You're right. an annoying symbol when somebody's hitting it and you're like, just, just stop. Just, just, just stop. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sorry. I lost my place again. <laughs> I stink. There you go. Right Anyways, there. All, right, all right. So the next thing we're going to talk about is irreconcilable, right? Mm, okay. So this is for most people that this is the only place in scripture where that word, even in the Greek is used is in second Timothy three. Really? So Paul shakespeare it. Okay. So he shakespeare it. So if we look back to what irreconcilable means from like the KJV, I think I'm trying to remember how the KJV, it was another word they used, but if you go back and use it, it's basically, uh, it's talking about, because I was like, okay, irreconcilable. How am I going to, like, what's the opposite of irreconcilable? Uh, and it's basically like being unforgiving, uh, not willing to resolve conflict. So um, <laughs> I know we see this a lot, right? It's uh it's the whole spirit of you do you, boo. Like, we ain't going to agree on this. You do you and uh, have a good life and sayonara and don't let hmm. the door hit you with a good Lord split you kind of attitude. <laughs> I haven't heard that one in a long <laughs> I was said don't let the door hit you on the way out. But yeah. don't, let <laughs> don't let the door hit you with a good Lord split you. That's your butt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's really, I, that's really thumper. It, it, it's really thumper. I don't know why I said that. But you know, the Bible says we're supposed to be agents of reconciliation. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what we're called to do. And so what is reconciling? It's right. the fact that, like, I, I think of reconciling as, you know, uh, you got a debt, and when you reconcile your debt, that means you've officially paid it off, so now we're on good terms. You're resolving the conflict. Right. And we think of, like, you know, like, like, like think about it this way, right? Like, I have no conflict with my bank as right. long as I pay off my car bill. Right. Second I stop paying off my car bill. Now there's conflict. Now there's conflict. Right. And the fact of until that bill is paid off, there is a debt and a debtor paid. Right. You know, and so as people who have been reconciled to God. Right. You know, there was a debt that was paid. Right. And Jesus was our, you know, we, we believe in substitutionary atonement, which means that Jesus took our place that we we were called to do right. to atone for our sins so we can be reconciled back to God. Exactly. Now we're called to go and reconcile us with each other. Yeah. And and I mean look at the world today, right? Look at how much conflict look at the Ukraine Russian oof. Conflict is what they're calling it, right? They're not because it's a that's conflict. What, that's what Russia is calling it. They're like, no, it's a conflict. It's, a, it's it, not it, a war. Of, but what they're saying is, it's not conflict. a war. It's a family. It's like, oh, it's family matters. Yeah, it's it's a family conflict. You know, it's like it's like you and Janelle having a little having a conversation, sure. and you guys are trying to figure yeah, things yeah, out. Yeah, we're just we're working. Through we're working some it out. So all y'all need to stay out. <laughs> we're, Goodness, we're working through some things. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, it's a, as Christians, we're called to resolve conflict, and and the best way to do that. Is to love and forgive and to, to talk it out and, and all these things. So Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says, Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and dearly beloved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another if any has a grievance against the other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you are to forgive. Above all, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity." So we're called to love and forgive and to have patience and gentleness and kindness and humility towards one another during these times of conflict. And this is saying that they will be irreconcilable, which basically means it they, will never happen. They are never looking to reconcile. It's right? kind of like I, it, it reminds me of the people that like they get baps, like backstabbed and like, I'll never I'll never yeah. forget this. Yeah, I'll never. Yeah, exactly. You'll, you'll get what's coming to you yeah. one day. Yeah. And it's like, oof. That, like that as hope, Christian, and, and, I, and I'll you say this: your bad karma or whatever, you know. Man, it, this is where it gets hard because, like, as Christians, you know, you read throughout the New Testament, going back to Second Thessalonians, it talked about the fact of one day the 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 people who 
persecute Christians and have hurt Christians, they'll get what's coming. Right. Because God is the Avenger. Right. Uh, he's the greatest Avenger, not Thor, Captain America. <laughs> God is the Avenger. That, that sounds like a youth pastor message right that there. That does. <laughs> the Avengers, no, God's the greatest Avenger. Right. That's that, that's a youth pastor sermon written all over. But, you know, the fact of, the fact of um, wow, I completely lost my change of thought. But <laughs> train of thought, change of thought, train of thought. Hey, you're just bed. as bad, bad as the second Timothy. Ooh, it's really, it's, really, <laughs> but, you know, it's the fact of God will, um, it, it, even in the Old Testament, it was talking about the fact of God is the, uh, what's, what's the word? Um, uh, it's not about like revenge. Like we're not called to go out and get, ve- Oh, vengeance is mine. Say it the Lord's like, we're not supposed to go out and I get will repay, that yeah. revenge. Right. But the fact of, if we leave that up to God and do what we are called to do and reconcile ourselves to one another and re- try to reconcile the world together, right. that's what we're called to do as Christians. But then it comes to the point where it's like, they're just so irreconcilable. Normally when that happens, you just wipe your hands and say, all right, go, go do your thing. Yeah, and, you know? and and really when they it's like become to shake the dust well, off your feet. when they become irreconcilable, there is a, a a point of what we're supposed to do, especially when it's a brother, right? Right, that, that's where church discipline comes. Yeah. Turn them over for the for that way Satan may destroy their flesh, destroy but the, God right. may save their soul, destroy the body to save the soul. Yeah. And so, you know, with the world we expect it, right? With the world we have to take it, right? We just got to take the the slap on the left side of our cheek and give them the right. Because it's gonna happen. Um, but with the brother, there's a step to not turn them over to Satan because we're getting even and it's vengeance and blah, blah, blah. It's because we want them to come back. It's like, we've done, right? we've done all we can. We've done. Well, it's not even so much wiping your hands. It's, Hey, we're turning this over and we don't want to, but we have to, in order to say the, to, to allow Satan to destroy your body, that God can save your soul because that you're not listening to logical arguments. You're not listening to the Holy spirit anymore. You are beyond anything that we can do and, and that, to help you. And so now we have to turn you over to God. Like that's just, it, it's you're to God. And it's not so much wiping our hands because if we wipe our hands and we're saying, Oh, you're never welcome back. But we're saying, Hey, I'm going to open my arms, let you go. And I'm going to keep my arms open, hoping that you come back <laughs> like mm-hmm. that. That's what that whole thing is about for a brother. And that's where Galatians six comes into play. So, all right, let's move on. We got a lot more to cover. So slanderers is the next one. Um, so slander, we kind of, we hit on this a little bit, uh, when we were talking about demeaning, you know, demeaning mm-hmm. and slandering somebody. Um, and so we're called to speak well of others, right? So in the last days, there's going to be slanders where that's all they do, right? They demean people, they slander your they character, slander slang. your name oh, all slang. the time. But as Christians, how do we counteract that? Well, we got to be speak well of others. It doesn't matter. Save, not save. If they're slinging mud at us, we don't sling mud back. Right. It, it kind of reminds me of like, uh, the, the old joke about like, uh, is it a prayer request? Or are you gossiping? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, and it's yeah. like there are so oh, many dear, times. Dear Lord, you are, I, I got a prayer request for my friend Mark. Yeah, he sure is an ignoramus. So I really hope God gets a hold of him. Like Igno- not, what? An ignoramus? Did, did you just call me a dinosaur? <laughs> I've never heard that term. You've never heard of an ignoramus? I've never heard of that term. We'll let you look at the dictionary later. Sounds good, <laughs> but but you know, like I like I used to tell people all the time. It's like I knew people at the church who'd never said a cuss word in their life, but they got a worse mouth than some uh, some people do because they're always just talking about people and yeah. cutting people down. And oh well, this person I've heard about this person. And right. did you hear what this person did? And it's like you know. God hates that. Yeah. Well, and, and we can see that in Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. It says, no foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need so that it gives grace to those who hear and don't grieve God's Holy Spirit. You were sealed for by him for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and anger and wrath and shouting and slander be removed from you along with all malice and be kind and compassionate Toward, uh, to one another, forgiving one another, just as God also forgave you in Christ. Man, and how hard is that sometimes, even for us, like when somebody does us wrong, to not speak ill of them, right? It's so hard. Uh, <laughs> I think there's something to be said, though, about what is truth and what is gossip? And, and do you always need to say it? You sure. know what I mean? Like, do you well, always need to? Right. And that's the thing where it comes out is, yeah, it could be truthful, but what at what point are you slandering their character by speaking the truth to everyone, right? Yep. So just because there's truth doesn't, it doesn't mean, mean it's you need for to tell everyone. everyone. Right. right. And, and exactly. that's something I've always appreciated about Beth is she's flat out told me, like, you know, like if, 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 uh, let's put this, but like if Beth and I are having struggles and conflict, she knows that I'm going to process it out with you. Right. She knows I'm going to process it out with my counselor. 
So you know that I'm going to process it out with Devin. Not, not all three sometimes. Sometimes sure. it's just you. Sometimes, sure. it's, But it's more of I'm not doing that to, to hate on Beth. No, it's your processing. I'm trying to process it out in the right. same way that Beth processes stuff out with other people and her well, therapist yeah. and other things. And right. I expect her to do that. But she flat out told me, she goes, I, I will, I, my goal is to never speak ill about you to my sisters. Yeah. And to my well, family and, because, right. and I do the same. I don't speak bad about Beth to my mom or to my sisters. I mean, my brothers don't really care, but you know, it's more the fact of, she's like, I never want them to, you know, like, cause you, you hear other people where it's like, all they do is complain about their spouse. Right. Or, you know, I have friends on Facebook where it's like, yo, is this Facebook or is this your journal entries? So about your husband, about your wife or about your, you know, some friend or whatever. And people sure. just blast people on Facebook all the time. So there's this good thing that, that I learned a long time ago is, is this going to hurt or help my relationship with the person I'm one talking to mm-hmm. and two talking about? Right. Is this going to help or hurt? Even in my processing, right? I got to know who I'm processing with, right? Yep. I'm not going to go and process to Joe Schmo on the street about an issue I have with you because they don't know you and all they're going to do is go, well, I'm just going to think bad thoughts about Mark because Chris said this and he doesn't know you at all. And so there's a huge disconnect of you got to know who you're disclosing things too. And you got to make sure that they're a type of person that is going to help you process it and not just think bad about the person. I I think you're hitting on something. Cause if I'm processing with you, normally you whack me upside my head and be like, bro, you, you're the one who's screwing up. (laughs) Get get back on track, bro. Not always though. No, no, but it's a fact that, but you're here to help me. Whereas I feel like a lot of times when people do things wrong, and they're trying to get validation. They won't listen to sound reason. They try to find other people to side with them. Right. And that's where the slander comes in. Right. So if I want someone else to be like, oh, yeah, you know, man, that fuller, he's just a jerk. Yeah, yeah, he is. Well, if I look at Beth, she'll be like, well, what'd you do? Like, <laughs> nothing. Janelle's really sure? good with that with me, too. Are She's sure? like, well, you know, I'll be like, I just don't understand this. Well, what did you say? Well, I said this. Well, that's probably why you idiot. <laughs> Not right. And those that's words, why we need people to call us out yeah. to speak the right. truth in love. Right. But, you know, at the end of the day, there's slander all over the place. And I think this is what we're trying to come and, back to is, are we doing what we can do to speak and, well of others? And I think that there's a difference between like um, um, processing and there's also a venting. And I think, you know, especially like with your spouse, you can vent to your spouse, right? And they know, hey, I'm just, they're just venting and that's all it is. And once they vent it out, They'll process it, and then they'll be like, well, I was an idiot for even saying that or thinking that, and it doesn't go past that. And, again, that's where you have to know who you're talking to because you don't want to be a slanderer. Mm-hmm. So, I like it. All right, uh, the next one, without self-control. Man, do we see this. And, and the, the best illustration that I can give for lack of self-control is pornography, right? Mm, okay. So we're, we know as Christians, right? I'm, I can't speak to the world, but I'm going to speak to Christians. We know there's a problem in the church with pornography. We know there is because there's a lack of self-control. Mm-hmm. We can look at that. We can look at, oh, shoot, I can look at myself. And I got, an, I'm overweight and not because I have a medical issue, just because I like to eat. I have a problem with self-control of food intake for myself. I have a self-control issue with social media. Mm. Like, like there was one time where I didn't have my phone, like it died. And I was like, I didn't know what to do. Jo- Jones. And I didn't know what to do. Start typing the air. <laughs> I, I, like, and that's, I remember one time it's like, remember back in the day when it's like, you know, when you're in the bathroom, you don't have your phone, you read the shampoo bottles. Oh yeah. Oh, I remember them days. <laughs> like, you, you know, but like, there's so many times where it's like, if you, there's actually a way to see how many times you unlock your iPhone in a day. Mm. It is unreal. Right. And I mean, I can use the excuse of, well, I'm using it for work, which is true. But how many times is it just because it's like, oh, I'm doing this, so I need to check something. I just right. need to check. I just want to check. I want to check. I want to check. Hey, I want to oh, check. I, want I see check. a notification on Facebook or an Instagram or, or YouTube or a comment or an email through, for real talk or, you know, this or that. I mean, yeah. Or it's like, do I, and this is my issue is the fact of, you know, I am so tired. I need to go to bed, but I can't go to bed unless I watch Instagram reels for like 10 minutes. Oh shoot. It's been two hours. Yeah. Right. Like, and that's just a lack of self-control to say, I'm going to put this down and choose something different. Right. And they always say, you know, the, the, the best way to master self-control is to, you know, realize a, you have a problem. And this right. is where the church idea of Lent came in. The mm-hmm. fact of, you yeah, give something you know, up 40 days and it's not even just give something up, but it's the fact of give something up. And this is what most people forget about is Lent. Is not just to get rid of something? It's to get rid of something to make way for God. Right. So, right. you know, the idea for Lent is the fact of, you know what, I'm going to give up, um, 
I'm, I'm going to give up Instagram. You know, maybe not Facebook and all that, but I'm just going to give up Instagram. That's it. Sure. The idea is supposed to be is you the times that, time, that I normally right. do with Instagram, I'm going to replace that with worship or right. you know, my Jesus. But so many times, and I think this is where a lot of people get lent wrong in the church of whatever faith tradition you come out of, Catholicism, Protestantism, Lutheran, whatever, is the fact of we'll say like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to remove this out of my life but I'm just going to replace it with something else that is not great. And right. I think that's where the it's a proof in the pudding of we don't have self-control. Well, and it, we even look at, like, I, I look at my life and sometimes in my outbursts of anger, mm. right? Mm-hmm. And, and how I don't have self-control over sometimes I, I just lose it, right? Yep. And I think most people can say that they've lost it at some point or another. Yep. And Proverbs 25, 28 speaks specifically against that. It says a person who does not control his temper is like a city whose wall is broken down. Which means they can Which easily means be overtaken. There, yeah, there's no defense, easily overtaken. Right, exactly. So there's no filter is basically what it's saying, right? Is you you've got you've lost your filter, so you have no self control over yourself and what you say. So all right, we got a lot more to go. We're actually doing okay so far, but we have a lot more to go. Um, brutal. Brutal is the next one. Uh, now, when, when you hear brutal, what do you think of, Mark? Um, I think of like, um, like man, that was brutal. Like, I think of like a basketball game where, you know, someone got their butt kicked. Like, that's what I think. Like, or like, uh, oh, you know what was really brutal to watch was when Notre Dame undefeated when Monte Teo went in and got their butt tainted them by Alabama football. Yeah. Like 50-something to zero. Yeah, that was brutal. Like, that was brutal because it was... It was a beating beyond measure. It was, yes. And that's what I think of what brutal or brutality is. So, you know? In the last days, people will be brutal, right? What do you think that means? Uh, I think that means Twitter. Twitter. I think that it's going to mean that demeanor, that slander, that violence. There's going to be there's not there's no room stuff. for coming to the table and reasoning and processing well, and, and it's not, having conversations. It's just the fact that people are just quick to. Uh, I mean, and we talk about cancel culture. Like right. I, I think there's some good signs of cancel. I, I think there's some good things that come out of cancel culture. Sure, but when we're just looking, looking to destroy people, right. I think that's what, that's brutal, bro. Well, yeah, and that's the thing. It's There's not just like, hey, I'm just going to... It's like, you know, even though it's wrong to just kind of put a jab at somebody, I'm not just going to jab them. I'm going to I'm destroy, destroy them. them. Yeah. You know, and so and and, and so how do we how do we counteract that as Christians? Well, we got to be kind and gentle, right? So so we have to be compassionate, forgiving. Uh, we have to be long-suffering. We see all these things of, of love. And Romans 12, 17 through 21 says, do not repay anyone evil for evil. Give careful thought to what you... Uh, Give careful thought to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Now, it doesn't say you always be able to, but it says as, uh, much, as much as you as, are as able. As much as possible. I love that part because right. you can't control other people. Right. You can only control you. Right. So, friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for God's wrath because it is written, vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you will heap fiery coals upon his head. Do not conquer by evil, but conquer evil with good. And so I think that's what we're, in that brutality, uh, we need to. In the words of Selena Gomez, kill them with kindness. Sure. <laughs> I, can't, I wouldn't. Quote. That's true. It, For no, in doing true. so, you'll heap fiery coals on their head. It's the idea of, you know, the idea of literally go above and I beyond know, it, with it, kindness. It just cracks me up that you say Selena Gomez. Because she wrote a song and I, act, I was going to play it over here over when, my phone. When that, that has been a saying around way before her. <laughs> oh, I know. It's just, it's just funny. But I accidentally um, started playing her uh, in, in Elliot's That's room. right. It's probably not approved for this podcast it's, anyways. So, anyways. <laughs> but still, um, I, I accidentally started playing Selena Gomez in Elliot's room. So Elliot's sorry, probably freaking out right sorry, now. Sorry, buddy. I'll put your, I, he listens to podcasts every night. Does he? Nice. Find, he listens to God's, bi- a God's Big Story that's put out oh, by yeah. the Village Church. Right. About, it's a podcast for kids. And he actually now, we used to have a really long bedtime routine. He kicks me out so he can listen to it. So that's if you cool. got kids, check out God's Big Story by the Village Church. Not sponsored. Just good stuff, man. <laughs> good, All right. It's some good stuff. All so, right. So, so anywho, so... The last days, people will be brutal, but we're called as Christians to be kind and gentle. Right, exactly. What else we got? So, uh, next one is without love for what is good. Mm -hmm. So, basically, loving what is evil. Do we see that today? I think so. Yeah, people love Folgers. (laughs) That is evil beyond measure. I'm pretty sure it was in Revelations chapter 80. 
But it's true. But you know, and so many, and I want to be careful of how I say this. I don't want to come off as ungracious. But so many people now say what is evil, and they call it good in terms right. of, or 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 they take things that are like choices, and they say, well, they don't have any control over it. Right. It's fine. It's just what they do. And, well, and everything from like pedophilia. Where they talk about well, like, oh, it's just a natural desire that a grown man wants to. No, well, homosexuality. Okay. Well, homosexuality is probably the more accepted norm right now, right? Which right. is, according to God, is an abomination, right? To a man to lay with a man is an abomination unto the Lord. Mm-hmm. And so, those aren't my words. Take it up with God. Uh, <laughs> I'm not trying to be like super straightforward with that, but it's true. But it's I, true. I, I can't defend it beyond that. But it's that. the fact that we have taken what is evil and then say, "Oh, this is good for people." It, the the, the right. porn industry, right? There's now. I mean, like, I, like I'll scroll through Facebook and people are just hanging out with porn stars, and I'm like, I, I know. know teenagers who watch these videos thinking, "Oh, these porn stars, they're just whatever. It's just their yeah. job. Right. It's just the oldest it's career nothing wrong. in the world." Yeah. But at the same time, like you know, that's an evil thing right. that people aren't just. You know, honoring God's with their body, but then other people taking part of it, which then fuels like sex well, slavery and, and all then, these different things. And then you have the attack and parade it. Well, you have the attack on the family core, right? Right. And and that's something that God set up. God set up a man and a woman, right? And there's an attack on heterosexuality mm-hmm. right now that is beyond measure, beyond any time in history. There has not been an attack on heterosexuality like there is now. And, and that's something that God established in the beginning. In Genesis 1, he established that. And yet we see that, oh, that's wrong. You know, we should be all-inclusive. It should be, if you want to f- go get married to a teddy bear, you should be able to because it's all about love. So I got it's a question not, for you. You right. ready? This is a rabbit trail. You guys ready for this one? Well, don't make it too long because we're already at 40 minutes. we still got a lot of content. A lot of Christians love war movies. Uh-huh. And we glorify war sure. and violence and gore. Sure. Is that Christians loving what is evil? But I'm, I'm, possibly I'm, i've had to ask myself that's this a, question that's a huge conversation that i don't want to jump into on this podcast but yes it's, it's a something good i've actually thought about because i've heard a lot of people who say should we be playing games like call of duty where you know it's like oh yeah you're, you're you know you're or like you know gotta go kill some commies like that's like an old thing people used to say back in the day for the cold war and right. it's like but at the same time it's like are, are, is taking innocent lives or telling kids like it's okay go do that I mean sure shooting zombies is a lot of fun don't get me wrong but it's like but is that something we should be glorifying as Christians right yeah I it's mean that's a, question. Good, that's a good question um, so uh, we gotta love what is good Romans 12 9 through 10 says let love be without hypocrisy detest evil cling to what is good love one another deeply as brothers and sisters take the lead in honoring one another so we're going to move on to the next one. Reckless, right? Uh, so what's it mean to be reckless and not reckless love? And see, and this is where I struggle is the fact of they use the word reckless right yeah. here. And so it's like, how are we supposed to put that in something about God? Side note, sorry. So continue. recklessness is continue. like un- un- being unwise, like super just like, I'm just out there doing, I'm living life to the fullest. I'm being reckless, you know? It's uh, eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we die. Right, exactly. Uh, and we see that all the time everywhere in this day and age, but uh, Ephesians five fifteen through 16 says, uh, pay careful attention then to how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are, are evil. Wow. Yep. Even back and in even Jesus said, be gentle as a dove, but sly as a serpent, wise, right. wise as a serpent. Right. You know, it, it's the fact that so many people don't give a crap. They don't care about their finances. They don't care about their bodies. They don't care about their friends, their relationships, their family, what's going to happen tomorrow. And then so many times we wake up and we're like, you know, people talk about all the time. It's like, oh, I wasted my twenties, right? Just doing whatever I wanted to do, and now I feel like I'm 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 behind on things. Now, there's something to be said about you know God created us to enjoy His creation, but if we're reckless and dumb, that's when you see people you know becoming you know they're they're reckless and they do these crazy things. Like I think of like the Travis Pastrana and the um, I can't say the name of the of the show, but Jack uh, Jack Donkey. And like, they just do these, it's these reckless things. And it's the fact of, it's like, we find humor in that, but it's like, you know, there's, that's something to be said, not just about these reckless, like crazy things these people do, but in terms of how we handle our mouths and how we handle our our bodies, it's just, are we wise or are we just doing whatever whatever we want to do? Because, you know, eat, drink, be merry for tomorrow we die. It doesn't really matter. Well, and, and. Uh, Pastor Brando Soche. Good old Brando. Uh, you know, he, we talked about uh, this past Sunday in church about, he goes, well, you know, it's funny because uh, in Proverbs, it talks about uh, the first way to acquire wisdom is to be wise, right? <laughs> it's like, wait, what? Yeah, you got to be wise to want wisdom. 
Oh, okay. So if you want wisdom, that means you're kind of wise at least a little at bit. At least a little bit to start <laughs> figuring out. So we got to be wise. Um, the next one is conceited. Uh, and I have be humble. Romans twelve sixteen says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud. Instead, associate with the humble. Do not be. Uh, do not be wise in your own estimation. Which kind of goes back into the lovers of selves. Like, look at me, sure. and I'm the best. And, and we're going to get into it again. I, I mean, these last couple are kind of tying in together, but lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Mm. This is very similar to what we just talked about, about not loving what is good. Um, but we got to put away evil. First John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Whew, that's a powerful one. Mm-hmm. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride in one's possessions is not from the Father, but is from the world. And the world with its lust is passing away. But the one who does the will of God remains forever. Mm-hmm. And, that's, and that's a hard one because we as Americans and as humans love, like we love pleasure because we want to feel good. We're the great American consumer. Yeah, and I feel bad because I sneeze and on my nose. So I think people can hear me like sniffling in my microphone. So I, I, I apologize. But how many times do we do what we want to do because it feels good, right. not because it's what God wants us to right, do? Right, exactly. Yep. Yeah, and how many times do we love the things of this world rather than loving the things of God? Um, uh, a lot. Yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> All right. Uh, so there's one more. I, I skipped one. I missed one, and it talked about being traitors, right? So if you go back to the, Talked about being traitors. Well, it says traitor in it, and I missed it, and I don't know how I missed it. It was in at the beginning of verse 4. It was traitors. Reckless, right. Right. And so... Uh, but what would a traitor be in, in comparison to this? So I, th- you know, I think a traitor uh, would be someone who is very much like a Judas. I would say Judas was a traitor, right? Someone who okay. who pretends to be, um, it, it's a wolf in sheep clothing, right? I think that's what a traitor in 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 aspects of this verse is going to probably be talking about. Someone who's a traitor to the faith, traitor to the brother. Um, who's going to turn you in, who's going to, you know, whatever they're going to do to destroy your faith. They're the wolf in sheep clothing. I mean, that's my opinion. I'm not saying thus saith the Lord. So yeah, it's really interesting. Like I'm, I'm looking at other translations and like, you know, King James, they even say traitors. The message says treacherous people, the ESV. Um, let's see where it is. Verse four treacherous. So it's the fact of, yeah, it's just, it's just fascinating how, how he, Paul includes, Traitors. That term, yeah, like they're just traitors. Well, and I think that... Oh, they're treacherous. So it's like, normally that means they go against what's good and what's known. We're going to... Like, you think that? We're going to see that in in a little bit later part here because... And I'll I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll circle back to the traitor here. Okay. So uh, the next thing is going to be holding to the form of godliness, but denying its power. So the biggest thing that I could Mm, think of, right... Of why this would have been included, why he would it would have been um, the Pharisees, right? Mm-hmm. This is what I'm thinking. The form of godliness they they held to it, Which but denied Paul, the power of God. Paul was a Pharisee. He was the chief of Pharisees. He said right. he was like he was the Pharisee of Pharisees. So do we have that nowadays, though? Right? Mm-hmm. And I think we do. I think we have a lot of Pharisees out there. I think of people like Benny Hinn. I think of people like Mark Driscoll. I think of people. Like X, Y, and Z, whoever whoever you want to say. I mean, some people are even saying Rabbi Zacharias right now, which uh, that one is, uh, I don't Still know. Still does some bad stuff. And, see, yeah. and, and when I think of holding to the form of godliness but denying his power, it kind of reminds me of the, the independent fundamental Baptist movement that I came out of where so much of that, which going back to you know Mark Driscoll and his other right. mega church pastors, it all goes back to control. And Beth talks about this a lot. Very, she talks about this. She's more well versed, I should say, in this conversation than I am because she came out of it even more than I did. Right. Where they they pretty much pastors will have so much control over their people of you have to do this, 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 this to the point where they don't let the Holy Spirit train and guide mm. and direct them because they may end up being different and coming to different conclusions to the point where you hear these horror stories of people who come out of this fundamental Baptist movements to the point where the pastors from the pulpit slander, demean, and brutal to them from the microphone, but right. they hold to the standard of godliness, but they denied the power of what the Holy Spirit can do. They chalk the Holy Spirit up to, if you do these rules, then, rather than just be like, you know what, they're following the Holy Spirit. You know, I'm I'm, I'm, I'm holding to this form of God because this is what I believe I need to do, but right. if your standard is different, 
the, you know, the power of gospel, uh, the, 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 the power of God is, you know, power to salvation to anyone who believes that's where it comes from. So I wonder if it has a part to do with that too. Maybe. Um, uh, so, so when I think of godliness in the form of back then, though, right back then, right when it was written. So th- when we read scripture, you I gotta, think of the whitewashed tombs. You got then. Yeah, you got to you got to read to what the author who he was speaking to at the time, right, to right. really fully understand it. Like John, the, what did John the Baptist say? Yo, you sly serpents. Right. Yeah. Right. And what did that mean for them? You know, and it meant a, a whole it lot a more lot. than it means to us. Or whitewashed tombs, basically. But, yeah, you're you're clean on the outside, but you're still death. So you're still I, full of stuff. I personally. Th- believe that that this paul was telling timothy and saying don't be like the pharisees right mm-hmm. don't be like those who who hold on to the form of godliness it doesn't say that they are godly right it says they hold on to that form form it's a the form. form of godliness but deny its power the power of christ who denied the power of christ who denied that jesus was the savior the the chosen one and we came to earth with, to save that's us. the only that's the unforgivable sin which we talked about in a previous right. episode of the only sin god can't forgive is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, which means is the fact of saying, not attributing to God what is God's. Right, exactly. Denying the power of God. And, and, de- and not just denying the power, but obviously right. chalking up to Knowing what God what the did truth is and denying and it. saying that it's of Satan. Right, exactly. So Matthew 6, 1 through 8 says, Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward with your Father in heaven. So whenever you give to the poor, don't sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, to be applauded by people. Truly, I tell you that they have their reward. But when you give to the poor, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Whenever you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites. Because they love to pray standing in the synagogues and the street corners to be seen by people. Truly, I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, go to your private room, shut your door, and pray to the Father who is in secret. And the Father who sees in secret will reward you. When you pray, don't babble like the Gentiles, since they imagine they'll be heard for their many words. Don't be like them, because your Father knows the things you need before you ask him. So basically, don't just have that form of godliness, right? Don't just, I'm going to fake it until I make yeah, it. Don't walk around looking like little Jesus. Right. Be. Be. Be little Jesus. <laughs> Not Jesus like you're the Savior, but yeah, you know, be Christians. So <laughs> so over the last two episodes, we've hit all these different things that says hard times will come in the last days for people will be dot, dot, dot. Right. We've hit all of these different things, but then the question becomes is, okay, so when are the last days? I think that's the question. We're more, okay, okay, we, we, we hear what you're saying. It says these are the last days, so are we in the last days? Are we not? How does that work? So it's funny that, that it says, right, let's go back to the, to the, uh, the text, yep. and it says, uh, but know this, hard times will come in the last days. Well, Which means it won't be easy. Well, man, that's, that's like hard times will come in the ba- last days, so are we there now? Well, I, I believe that the last days have already, are already here and have been here for 2,000 years. Right. Well, it says avoid these people, which right. means that they are already here. Right. So 1 John 2, 18 through 19 says, children, children, it is, it is the last hour. This is first, this is first John, right? So mm-hmm. it's been around for 2000 years. If we're in the last hour, right? Right. Cause this ain't heaven on earth. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if it was, there wouldn't be any sin, but children, it is the last hour hour. And as you have heard that antichrist is coming, even now there are many antichrists have come mm-hmm. by this. We know that this is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have have, have remained with us. However, they went out so that it might be made clear that none of them belong to us. And I think that goes back to the traitors right there. Okay. I think that's where they're talking about. Paul was talking about Timothy, even though they went John, out, but they did not belong. It was those who did who who were with them, like a Judas was, but were not of and them, and then walked away. And walked away, right? I believe that's what they were talking about as far as traitors and, go. And is that part of the deconstruction that we see? right now right and i think it is i think i think it comes in waves you know the i I forget where it's at but it talks in scripture in the new testament somewhere and i'm sorry i I didn't look this up this just came to my mind but it talks about in the last days and this may have been in one of the um the sermon uh the mount of olives um the the discourse on the discourse yes uh but it talked about in the last days it will be like birth pangs right 
Yeah, it's gonna yeah, be. Yeah, yeah, that was so Jesus. So we see in uh, was that the Olivet Discourse? Uh, I think so. Or was Matthew that twenty six? Maybe. Yeah. So, but know. but anyways, it's uh, if you've ever had a baby or if you've never ever known somebody that's had a baby, apparently it think, sucks. And you think about birth pangs is the same as contractions, right? It's when that contraction. So the contractions start at first; they're not as bad, and they get more heavily intense as time goes along until pff, the birth happens. I think that that is the best description of what the last days, the last days, the last hour started 2000 years ago. And it's slowly been, the contractions have been happening, but you know, but I feel like so many people then, and I think there's a, you know, going back, there's a question of, okay, so is there a difference between the last days and the day of the Lord, which I, we would say, well, yes, because the day of the Lord is going to come. So it's funny though, that there's been many days of the Lord, right? We look at, at the when the Assyrians came, when the Babylonians came, um, those prophets talked about the day of the Lord is upon us. Right, the day of the Lord is when God pours out His wrath. When God punishes His evildoers, yeah. It, 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 well, not even evildoers. He pun He was punishing Israel, and He called it Himself the day of the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the day of the Lord. Now I use the Assyrians, I use the Babylonians, and the day of the Lord. And so it's that it's that punishing evil, right? Mm -hmm. So there's going to be a great day of the Lord, and that's going to be where He punishes evil and banishes evil for the rest of eternity. So, so there is a little bit of difference with that. Yes. But where I think a lot of people get tied up and maybe we should talk about this just for a split second is the fact of there's so many people who talk about the last days and they try to put history into the revelations of the, of the revelation with the seven seals, the seven trumpets and seven sure. bowls. And they go, look, it's going to happen. Jesus is going to come back on this day at this time. And they've done <laughs> it so many different times. And I feel like there's two different reactions to all of this, these thoughts with when are the last days coming, Right. where people go, okay, so, well, there, I should say there's three reactions. There's one that we see in when, you know, uh, Jesus talking about when the day of the Lord has come like a thief in the night or, you know, the, the people who were watching and then they ran out of oil. So they went back to get more and they came back and went, oh, what happened? We, we missed it and they weren't ready for it. But so, so there's some people who have the fear of, I don't want to miss it. 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 And there's some people where it's like, man, it's taking Jesus this long to come back. He right. may never come back. Right. But then there's the other people that seem so hyper focused on when the Lord is coming back that this is where a lot of, you know, the, the occult comes out of. You hear of all of these different cult groups that are following, like the ones out of Waco, Texas, the ones sure. that are out west, the ones that move different places. Like, I mean, even in Madam Secretary, one of the episodes is about this cultist group that literally understood revelation to mean certain things. And then they took their entire people over to some extradition country over in Europe. And then they ended up a lot of them committing suicide because right. like the day of the Lord's upon us and all these different things. And sure. there's so many times where people hyper focus on revelation and Jesus coming in the last days that it's almost not healthy either. Right. So what is the appropriate response to understanding the last days? Well, like, I do we, do we look in angst and hope? Do we, you know, do we, you know, go, I think, go, do we go overtake Jerusalem? I like, think, I think there's a way to prepare for it. Right. Okay. So, uh, Lifeway gave seven points and I kind of interject my, I'm going to interject my thoughts into each point that they make. Right. Okay. If you want to read the whole article by Lifeway, uh, it'll be in the show notes. Um, uh, Lifeway is a sponsor of this podcast. Sure is. So number one, uh, they say is, well, I'll just read this for the seven things and then we'll go back real fast and, and I'll give my thoughts. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Number one, live in the light of the, of his first coming Two, be discerning three, accept the uncertainties Four, don't lose hope. Five, encourage one another. Six, live, live as if today was the day and seven, keep on doing the work Jesus left us to do. So, Number one, live in the light of his first coming. Jesus came and paid a price at his first coming, so let us never take that for granted and let us live our lives like his sacrifice and death on the cross truly matters. I like that, that it truly matters to us. It I truly like matters to us. It's not just some story and, oh, I'm a Christian, but I never focus on what Christ actually did. It reminds me did. of uh, the, the, the Gator song, Because He Lives, I Can Face Tomorrow. Because He Lives, right. All Fear Is Gone. right. I like that. So the, these are ways, the, the seven ways are ways we should be preparing for the last days now. Yep. Okay. So number two, we need to be discerning, right? There's many false teachers out there, false 
uh, teachings, teachers. They're out in the world today. They've been around for 2,000 years. Obviously, we just read in First John that they've been going antichrist, right? They're antichrist, so false teachers. Uh, we and actually, they were among them back then. So who, I mean, now it's... Right, and, we've yeah. ha- and we had uh, two episodes with Rodney Buse from What Does the Bible Say? Um, how to discern false teaching. About talking about false teachers and how to discern And it. with TikTok and YouTube right now, I mean, it's even harder it's to huge. discern that. It's huge, it's huge. Um, so, you know... I would just recommend that, you know, let the Bible and prayer guide you and ask the Holy Spirit to protect you from false teachings and be diligent about seeking the truth. Mm -hmm. Number three, accept the uncertainties. Uh, We don't know when he's going to return, right? Um, And that's okay. Mark 13, 32 through 33 says, Now concerning the day or the hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Watch, be alert. For you do not know when the time is coming. So that's all we're commanded to do is to watch and be alert, right? But it doesn't mean that watching and, and being alert doesn't mean that that's all we're focusing on, right? We and have other responsibilities. I think that's where we can get stuck is we're so hyper-focused on what's coming next, what's coming next, what's coming next. That's like Second, second Thessalonians where right. Paul says, get off your butt right. and, get, and keep working. Exactly. Like, you know, there's still there's, things to do. There's stuff to do. Yeah. And one of those things to do is not, to not lose hope. And the way to not lose hope um, is we got to remember that our hope is in Jesus and the fact that God is not a man that he should lie. Numbers 23, 19 says, God is not a man that he might lie or a son of man that he might change his mind. Does he speak and not act or promise and not fulfill? He will come back and we need to encourage each other to remain in the hope of Christ that he will come back because we can lose hope. Like you were saying a little bit ago, he may never come back. You know, there are people that think, oh, he's not coming back in my lifetime or he ain't, you know, he's not coming back for a long time. So I don't have to worry. I can live the way I want. But we don't know that. Right. We've read in Mark 13 that we don't know the hour or the day when he's coming. And when that's he's coming not back. as and a, I feel like a lot of times pastors and churches use that as the way to guilt people into doing what's right. Right. But in reality, it's supposed to instill hope, not right. guilt. Right. And that's where communion comes in. Where communion, we're supposed to, you know, do this in remembrance of me until right. I come back with you until you until you could do this in the new kingdom. Right. Which we remember what Jesus did, but that right. he will come again. Exactly. So number five, we're supposed to encourage each other, right? Mm-hmm. So we were never meant to walk this walk alone. Encouraging each other is very important, and you may be strong today, but weak tomorrow, right? I may be strong in the faith today, and tomorrow I'm weak, and I need a brother to lean on. And, and that's where, where one falls, the other picks one's up, and then when the other one falls, the other pick up. I mean, that's... And tying it back into hope. Well, I can be hope. I can remind you of the hope. You can remind me of the hope, and we can continue and, and on pushing forward. And, and that's what we hope this podcast does is encouragement throughout the week. But that's why we always push back that yo, we just the vitamin, right? You got to be a part of a local body that actually right. knows you and loves you and can call you out it, on your crap sometimes too. Exactly, we're just a supplement. Yep. That's all we are. Uh, number six, live as if today was the day. Right. So Revelation sixteen fifteen says, "Look, I am." Coming like a thief, blessed is the one who alert and remains clothed so that he may not go around naked and people see his shame. Be prepared. Again, be prepared. Boy but Scout. what does be prepared mean? It means that you're not going, I'm going to put off tomorrow. For I'm not going to put off today. What? Or how does that verse go? Because I'm not going to put off till tomorrow what uh, needs to happen today, right? It's not being that sloth. There, there's things to be done. We need to do those things. We need to keep our mind focused on Christ. We need to continue to self-examine. We need to have those. But it also keeps an eternal perspective on what we do. Sure. Right. Everything we do has an eternal consequence, whether for good or for evil, at the end of the day. So, right. yep. I know. I just took your at the end of the day. I like it. At so the end of the day. The last thing, number seven, and this is the crescendo. This is why it's number seven, the perfect number. <laughs> This is how, what we need to be doing as we are being prepared and watchful. We need to keep on doing the work Jesus left us to do. Jesus gave us a very important job to do, and that's to take the gospel to the end of the earth, to love and to care for others. This should be our focus. This is how we stay alert, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So we stay alert because we know the time is coming. If we're still here, there's still stuff to do. When he says, be prepared, right? Stay alert. We got to keep pushing on with the focus that we don't know when the day is coming. All the more reason we need to get out and proclaim the gospel of Christ, right? Because we don't know when he's coming. We don't know. We're supposed to continue to throw the seed and to water the seed. And he's going to send the the reapers out at some point in time to gather together the the wheat and the and the chaff and he's going to burn away the chaff and keep the wheat. You know, so. there's a picture that I've I've been, you know, recently been told where it's kind of like, you know, 
think of, I mean, obviously if we step into the, the culture of the New Testament church, right? And so many of them were Roman citizens. And when a Roman leader would go away off to war, they were anticipating on him coming back because right. he's the king. And so they wouldn't just sit back and go, is he going to come? 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 He's like, no, 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 no. We still have jobs we have to do, right. but we need to be prepared at any moment to drop what we're doing and be like, the king has come back home. Right. Let's yep. party. Right. And that's what we're, we're looking forward to the so day. We when also the king have returns. jobs to do. And our jobs is to love God. It's to love others. It's to, you know, the, the great commission is, right. you know, while you go preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and baptize the name of the father, teach everything that Jesus right. commanded us. And lo, God is with us, which is cool that we're waiting for Jesus to come back, but God is already here with us. Right. And the Holy Spirit. We are the we are the servants of the talents, right? But we are exactly. But we're waiting for the Master to come back. And are we going to be known as the person with one talent or ten talents? So that, I think that's how. And, we I, stay and we're all given different talents and different abilities. But what's I'm not, in your hand? I'm not saying what the but talent what's is. What's in your hand? Right. right. What is? In what your have you hand? done with the talent? It so, doesn't matter what the talent so, is. What so have you let's done with land it? this plane. All right. So I'm thinking of someone who goes, okay, there. If if someone is kind of hyper focused on the last days or the last days here or the last days here. What encouragement would you give them? Um, it's not a bad thing to to study the last days, right? As eschatology is a, to anticipate yeah. is a is a pretty good. Oh, it, it's great, right? There's some excitement. I think it when it turns from excitement to fear, mm. it's maybe some dangerous ground, right? And and you're dreading the day of the Lord, right? We know that God wins in the end, right? No matter what, we know he's, the yeah. end of the story. <laughs> we know the we know the end. Everyone knows the end, uh, and then that's our hope. But we also have a job to do. So it's okay to study that. It's okay to focus on that. But don't forget your job. Right. Two most important commandments that we're ever given: love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Christ also told us to go out proclaiming in Matthew twenty-eight verse thirty-two. Anyways, I might be wrong. I know it's Matthew twenty-eight. It's Matthew 28. But uh, uh, we're supposed to go out proclaiming the gospel to the end of the earth. Like that's that's our job. That's the that's the, the charge he gave the disciples. We are supposed to be disciples of Christ, though we are not the original 12 apostles. We are still disciples. Really? And that Jesus. call still applies to us, contrary to some people's belief. We are disciples of Christ. That applies to us. Mm-hmm. So... Oh, that, that's what I would say. And I don't really have much to add to it, except for the fact of if someone finds himself hyper focusing on, no, 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 we got, we got to look for the signs. We got to, you know, there's, there's wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes and all these different things. And it's like, there have been for 2000 years. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, we, we as Christians, we were never called to understand the big picture. We're called to do our part. Right. And, you know, I think that's where some people get stuck is we either have such a, big oh my goodness grandos picture and we're so focused on that or you know the opposite we're so hyper focused that we forget that there is a big picture at stake right and you know we're we're called what does god call us to do he calls us to be the salt and light he calls us to make his name known he calls us to i mean whether, whether you want to say you, you whether, whether you're Calvinist or Minion or Molinist or anywhere in between, God calls us to go out there and to proclaim that, you know, Jesus is king and that he's here right. and that he will come back. And at some point, we got to an answer for what's happening. Jesus is a coming soon, morning or night or noon. Sorry. I don't know that one. It's a Gaither song. That's <laughs> I, I know some Gaithers, but not all the Gaithers. But that, that's the encouragement I would do is yeah, the fact I of— agree. And I think that's what this passage is talking about is the fact of, I think the focus of this passage has less to do with, you know, the fact of be scared and here's what to expect and look for the signs, but it's more the fact of hard times are going to come and it's going to be hard. Here's what it's going to look like. These are what what all the people are going to be like, but so avoid these people. Right. But don't forget what you're called to do. Right. And and, and I remember that Paul was writing to a pastor. Well, he was writing to his his son, Timothy of, you know, I'm looking out for what's best for you. It's going to be hard. This is what's going to be full of. Be prepared. It's going to be hard, but, you know, cling to Jesus. Right. I think that's that's really where Paul was trying yep. to go with that. Right. Does that sound good? Sounds good so to me. So should we get to our favorite part of the show? Let's go. Time for Fun Facts with February. <laughs> and 
And there it that is. That laugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Fuller, dude. This is the... We haven't had a two-part episode in quite oh, a, it's been a while. while. And I really got to go to the bathroom. So let's get this... <laughs> let, <laughs> let's get this fun fact on the road and send these people on their merry way, my friend. The fun fact... Which I have not looked. Of the day. I did not look. I'm ready. <laughs> and look at my iPad shut. But look, I, I, I was so trying I to do... It. I was trying to do the William Shatner, like, Captain Kirk... The fun fact of the day. I, I wasn't a Star Trek fan, so I don't know what oh. we're... T- I mean, I know what we're talking okay. about, but I'm not well, following. I'm just trying to kill some time because you <laughs> said you had to pee, so... Come on! <laughs> what you got for don't us, Don't be dude? a lover of self. Quit worrying about your pee. <laughs> Sorry, but kidding. I gotta go. <laughs> right. I'm gonna leave right now. We don't hurry this the, thing up. The fun fact of the day is there's a 107-acre forest made up of a single tree. The trembling giant in Utah's Fish Lake National Forest includes over 47,000 quaking aspen trees that share the same root system. Some scientists estimate it is close to a million years old, but we probably assume that it's not. But that is, I moved my microphone so I can reach the soundboard. That is a really fun fact. One tree, all the same root system. So. How crazy to think about that. So so do we call it a tree or do we call it a one forest? tree with many It's 107, shoots? It's 107 acres. That's but unreal. It reminds me, and this is why I wanted to do it today. It reminds me of how we are in Christ. Christ is the single tree. and He is the vine and we, we are the branches. His banner over roots. me is love. We are shoots off the tree sharing the same root system, which is Christ. Like how I tied that in? I really like how I tied it, but that yeah. is a fun fact. You fun have gone two fact. for two. Let's to be honest. You've gone like 140 for 140. <laughs> no, that's not true. 139 we doubled for 140. Up one time. We doubled up one time. 139 for 40. And I caught it. You know, I was listening to the episodes with you and Janelle. I'm like, ooh, is he going to do a repeat fun fact to see if I'm actually listening? I should have. You did good. I should have done a repeat. But you did good. You know, we've had a lot of people say it's been really fun for people to get to know our spouses on the show that I feel like we might need to do a mashup with all four of us. That'd be kind of fun to do in the future with at some Fuller point. Heights. Oh. <laughs> I like it. Oh, goodness. But either way, guys, we love that you hang out with us week in and week out. There are new listeners to this show every single week, and we would love just to be able for you to join part of our community, the RTC fam online, the Facebook community. What do they search on Facebook again? Real Talk Christian Podcast. Community. Community. That's it. That's it. It's pretty oh, easy. Just, the way, or just our name and community. Or, hop, or just go to the Facebook page, or, find the groups, whatever. But either way, we would love for you to join in that Facebook community. And then don't forget to go to YouTube and subscribe to the podcast. Look at us. Look. Beauty right here. But uh, the only way you're going to see it is by going to YouTube. And when you subscribe, don't forget to hit that little bell notification. Ding! Ding! And you'll catch all the latest episodes as we drop them. And we are talking about possibly doing a surprise live at some point. So oh. the only way to catch that, it's only going to be on YouTube. So you better go and subscribe if you want to catch those live surprise streams. And if you listen on Spotify, make sure you leave a rating, Apple podcast, that rating and review. We are still waiting to get to that 100th review to give away a study Bible. So let's make it happen. Let's go. People. Next week, come back. We're talking about tox- toxic relationships and what we should do about it. But until that time, take it easy.